hello good people I haven't been making any videos for a few weeks now not that I don't want to you understand it's because I've not had the equipment to do it I've had a flight simulator for at least 30 years in one form or another since the early 90s in fact my first sim the mark one started out in a cupboard uh, out of the way in the spare bedroom as my hobby grew and the power of the computers multiplied I prized my sim out of the cupboard and developed in stages to slowly take over the spare room. Here is the Mark II with its cardboard cutout instruments. And then the mighty Mark III with three monster CRT monitors and three linked computers pumping out enough heat to keep the house warm through the winter. Although I have an understanding wife, I could see that the odd jibe from her about the amount of space I was taking up and the general untidiness of it all was taking its toll on the household. About seven years ago, I think, I, I bit the bullet and had a large wooden hut built in the garden so that I could move everything there and rebuild my sim, the Mark IV. My initial joy of seeing all this empty space slowly being filled with all my junk was only matched by that of my wife dancing around in all the space that she suddenly acquired in the house. I had big plans for the Mark IV. At the time I was convinced that the best simulators were those that suspended disbelief, that the pilot should be enclosed in the sim so that nothing from the outside world would ruin the illusion that you were in a real aircraft. To this end I built a three-quarters size cockpit with glare shield and windows. Surrounding the front were three 32-inch TVs and from the position of my seat looking out the window I felt it was a fair representation of the real thing. I was also doing a lot of flying of regional turbojet aircraft, particularly the Q400, and I got quite obsessive about it. My cockpit build started to incorporate the features of the Q400 and I even started to build a full-size overhead. Things were getting complicated however. I found that my ambition was not matched by my skills or the time that I had. Little projects either remained unfinished or worked in a fashion or stopped working for some reason or another. My half-built simulator remained this way for many years. Over the course of the last few years it seems my view of what makes a good flight simulator has changed. My tastes have changed in that I now prefer to fly GA aircraft pretty much exclusively. I realise that realism is yes perhaps a worthy goal but for me simplicity and reliability is much much more important. When half the things I've added over the years no longer work or the ability to fix or change something becomes a major task then for me it's pointless. So on to the Mark V. This time I'm going to get it right. This time everything is going to work. Everything that I no longer need will be stripped out and discarded. I will have a simulator fit for purpose almost bespoke for the way I fly. I'm not very good at planning things in detail. I usually start out with a simple idea of what I want. I mull it over for a few hours and then get the tools out. As you can imagine, I make a, a quite a few mistakes this way, usually along the lines of, oh, I wish I'd thought of that or this bit of equipment no longer fits. However, because I'm keeping it simple, I'm hoping to keep the problems on the minor scale. To this end, I have three goals. One, everything will be separate and therefore easily changed. Two, everything will be easily accessible. No more doing my back in trying to get to the rear of the computer. And three, everything will be movable, even if it has to go on wheels. This way, if I make a major mistake, it'll be a doddle to rectify. So the Mark V has or will have four main parts. Oh, let's first get rid of the Mark IV. A stand for the left monitor, incorporating the sound system and shelving for books, etc. 
a stand for the right monitor, incorporating the computer, keyboard and switch panels. A stand for the central monitor, which will stabilise and tie everything together. Let's put the monitors in place now. And a instrument panel incorporating the yoke, throttle set, starter switches, fuel switches, go flight modules and anything else essential that I've probably forgotten. And last but not least I have to find room for myself. This last part, uh, the instrument panel, is obviously the most complicated and I've only a vague idea at the moment of how I'm going to make it. Anyway, because, as I've said before, I'm not much of a planner, I guess it's time to get the tools out. So the stands are simple braced trestle tables made from 25mm stock and 5mm plywood mainly. This is the left stand which will house the subwoofer and have space for books. Very simple to make. After sanding down and priming it gets a final coat of blackboard paint. Here is the completed left hand stand in place. The right stand is of a similar construction but houses the computer which now has casters so that I can pull the thing out easily. The keyboard and the X keys panel just sit on a backward slanting shelf fixed to the stand. Oh so very simple. I've tried to make the keyboard easy to access but at the same time out of my line of sight, well sort of, my previous keyboard on the Mark IV was quite a complex affair which I had suspended over my head. It worked well unless I had to do any lengthy typing. My arms soon got tired. I think most simmers have come up against the perennial problem of not knowing which cable does what. The rear of the computer is now easy to get to, has good lighting and everything is labelled. The central monitor just sits on a sturdy oak shelf that I happen to have lying around. When I've decided on the best position for the monitors, and I keep changing my mind over this, uh, then I'll bolt it to the side stands. So that's the state of play so far. Still got the instrument console to construct of course and I'll probably make an update video about that but at least the sim is usable and uh, I'm able to fly with the joystick uh, balanced on a little table on my lap. I'm pleased with how it's uh, going and of course while I'm planning the next stage I can also get on with recording some more aircraft reviews which I'm sure you're waiting for with bated breath. So I'll see you soon. Bye bye.